three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. everybody thank you so much for listening this is the real pineapple and this is your humble host hunter here hope you're all having a great week so far i've got a review here for jungle cruise the latest disney uh premiere access meaning gotta whop out 30 dollars to watch this shit uh but the latest disney plus theatrical um combo release uh so Scarlett Johansson loves this, I'm sure. But <laughs> but this uh, stars, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson himself playing Frank Wolf, Emily Blunt, coming off of one of my favorite performances of the year in A Quiet Place Part Two. My God, she's incredible in that. Um, so they star. Uh, so she stars as uh, Lily Houghton. So here's something I'm gonna say about this movie. This was dumb, and I. <laughs> And I mean that honestly as a compliment because here's the thing about this movie. It's it's the mummy. It is the mummy mixed with some Black Panther, which I'll get to, mixed with, you know, Indiana Jones, mixed with National Treasure. It, it's very much those those kind of 90s type of adventure kind of uh, swa- uh, swashbuckling type of uh, adventure films that they're going for. And to an extent, I think they actually nail it. But at the same time, though, the, the story is so much more convoluted than it has any fucking right to be. But anyways, Lily Houghton, she's this archae- uh, archaeologist. She's this, you know, Indiana Jones, Laura Croft-esque uh, character played by Emily Blunt. She uh, believes that there is this flower um, called uh, the healing. Uh, I think it's called the heal. Uh, it's called the he- healing to uh, healing tears of legend. I can't remember if they actually mentioned the name of the tree. Uh, but anyways, it's this power. It's this flower that's supposed to heal any ailment. Essentially, you know, it's the uh, the you know the heart shaped herb of the <laughs> of the movie, and she wants to go and discover this tree. Obviously, make this incredible archaeological uh, archaeological discovery, but then also go ahead and be able to help people. And she's joined by uh, Jake Whitehall, who plays uh, McGregor Houghton, who's her brother. He's the um, Jonathan uh, character from the Mummy, and that honestly, for me, was a relationship I enjoyed so much more than I thought I would. There's this point where McGregor and Frank have the kind of this heart to heart. I actually like the bromance that they have between the two of them. But there's this point where he kind of breaks down why he's so willing to uh, be so loyal to her, even when, you know, it might might cost him uh, political connections because he cares about her so much. Not just because, you know, she's his sibling, but because of this thing that he does for her. And you go, wow, that's a really cool wrinkle that this film didn't need to add. But it actually makes you care more about um, about their relationship because they're giving each other shit as siblings do. Trust me, my siblings give me shit constantly. Um, I love you both, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but I but their relationship is a genuinely sweet one. That I wasn't uh, thinking that I would like as much as I did. So I gotta talk about Dwayne Johnson. So I'm such a huge fan of The Rock. I mean, obviously, not every film hits. I think people at points are a little too kind, a little too generous with some of the shit that he's uh, he's been in. Because when I think about something like Rampage, Rampage is not a good movie. I know people want it to be, but it's not. <laughs> like, Rampage is dumb. Um, even Baywatch. I know some people like Baywatch. I thought Baywatch was fucking stupid. You know, there are some people saying Baywatch is better than this. And to that, I would say, you're fucking high. <laughs> this is way better than Baywatch. But the biggest issue for this film, for me, actually, there's one bigger issue. But one of the biggest issues I have is that when you look at a Brendan Fraser when he's playing, uh, what was his name, uh, Brian O'Connell in uh, the Mummy films, the thing about Fraser is that he did have this charm to him, but he was he had this great ability to be kind of a dick 
even, you know, even as he's incredibly charmed by Rachel Wise, I mean, why wouldn't you be? My God, have you seen her? But the fact that he's able to play off that charm and come across like an asshole, that's a really fine line that you have to be able to walk when you're being, a, you know, a leading man in that type of film. And I think he nails it. Dwayne Johnson just really can't pull off being a dick in this movie. So when he's when he's kind of working these scams on Lily, I don't know. For me, it just came across like, well, he doesn't really have any obligation to be straight with you. This is all about money. He makes that very clear up front that, oh, I'm taking you to this place to find the flower because I just want to get paid, not because I like you. And you kind of go, all right. I mean, he's, he's kind of let you know, you know, fuck you, <laughs> you know, from jump. And she gets she has nerves to get mad when he's like conning her. I'm like, well, yeah, the, he kind of did warn you. Like he's kind of a piece of piece of shit. Like this is like telling John Mayer not to John Mayer. I mean, at some point <laughs> you have to know what you're getting. But those points where he's supposed to be kind of a dick, it just it never came across sincere to me personally. And I and I think the film does fall short in that. The other thing is that the villain, uh, the main villain, uh, 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 Aguirre, played by uh, Edgar Ramirez. I, okay, that whole plot with the villains, and, I, and I'm a fan of his. Uh, if you haven't seen him in Zero Dark Thirty, he's incredible in that, uh, just off that alone. But he he's not good in this. And the biggest issue is that he's so CG heavy. As is a lot of the film, this is a $200 million budget film. I'm assuming The Rock was probably 50 million of that, so that leaves you 150. Emily Blunt is exactly pulling in, uh, you know, chump change, so she's probably, what would you say, 30 million? So that's 80 million right there. So you have 120 million left to actually, you know, produce the fucking movie, in theory. I'll be honest, guys, there were points where this CG was so spotty, especially on the villains. I just went, fuck, this looks like the fourth Pirates movie at point where it's like they, it felt like the the budget just got slashed. And even, now I say out loud, the fourth Pirates movie looked better than this. It's it's really frustrating. So when they're, the film is explaining about these villains, you don't really fucking care because there's no connection to them. Uh, the whole backstory about, you know, what does happen, I will say that part's kind of interesting, but because so much of this is CGI, is CGI and even the flashbacks are just kind of done in a way that, I don't know, just didn't hit for me in the way that I, I, I think it should have, which is a bummer. Uh, the big plot for me that does work is uh, Jesse Plemons plays this guy, uh, Prince uh, Wahim. He's, uh, he ends up being a, like this German this German soldier who's going ahead and trying to get to the flower first. You know, he's the, he's the evil, he's the not, he's the evil Nazis, you know, and and he's great. He's actually my favorite part of this. He doesn't have a whole lot to do, but there are points where he's just being a son of a bitch. There's a point where he kidnaps McGregor that I actually thought was more had more attention to it than it had any right to. And a lot of that is because of how they play off each other. Uh, Jack Whitehall and Jesse Plemons, we do get this kind of weird uh, pairing of the two of them as we get to the film's climax. And that really worked for me. I was actually kind of surprised at how much that worked for me. But I will say, while I don't think The Rock is great at pulling off the kind of the con man aspect of this, uh, of uh, Frank Wolf, him and Emily Blunt's chemistry is fucking wonderful. It actually feels like they earn them kind of having feelings for each other by the end of the film. Because I was at a point kind of watching it going, I feel like this is going to be more like Aquaman, or I don't, not because Emily Blunt will hit someone, that's right, I haven't got Amber Heard, but because, but but more in the sense that, oh, I don't know if they're going to have chemistry, but as I've seen them do interviews and stuff together, I went, okay, they actually, if this translates to screen, then this alone will carry so much of the film, and it does translate really well to screen, um, just they're always giving each other shit, and it's really quite charming and it it, it works it, it really shockingly works and if they want to do a sequel to this which you know this uh this opened to about 35 million in theaters and then another 30 million on disney plus but just 200 million so i really just think a lot of these studios are just going to take some of these films that just aren't making what they would probably make you know, in a normal theatrical run if, you know, the, the pandemic wasn't a thing, which it still is, people. Um, 
I think people are just going to kind of go, all right, we're just going to give this a sequel no matter what, because we don't know, like, you know, we have the star power. It'd be a shame to not go to the well during under normal circumstances. I think we're going to see a lot of that. And I think Jungle Cruise, where it ends up, it's definitely setting up for a sequel. Like, it, it they're not even... They're not even hiding that shit. Which, you know what? Fine. Don't don't hide it. I mean, just let us know. And I would be interested to see... I would be interested to see what a second film of this would look like. I think they could... Now, they need to get some different fucking writers. Because I will say, uh, the writers on this movie... Uh, Michael Green... Um, who I was sitting here thinking, I was like, why does I know that name? He was the screenwriter on... It's like three of my favorite movies in the last 20 years in uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Fucking love that movie. He wrote Blade Runner 2049 and he wrote Logan. Like what? Like when I looked up his filmography and went, how the fuck did you write? How are you a part of this? And this is so mad for me. Uh, Glenn Fercara actually, oh fuck, that's probably why. The only thing he's written is Cats and Dogs. Well, fuck. Okay, this is why it's bad. And then uh, John uh, Requa, he went ahead and wrote Crazy Stupid Love, which isn't great, but I do enjoy that. But he also wrote, um, he also wrote I Love You, Philip Morris. I love, I love you, Philip Morris. Uh, wrote Bad Santa. What the, what the fuck? Wrote Blind Tunes back in action? Okay, I'm really confused. Like, and he wrote Small Foot. What it? I... <sighs> Wow, this is this is a weird movie. <laughs> like this is kind of blowing my mind as I'm going down this rabbit hole. But it it's one of those things that it's frustrating because you'd feel like if this is done for rewrite, if you bring in another writer to help punch this up, I think you can have a great film here instead of what I think is just an a goodish movie. I, I really don't even have much to, uh, much more to say on it. Uh, when you find out Frank's backstory, which, by the way, within like 20 minutes, you're going to kind of go, all right, I have a feeling that, and trust your instinct on that. That's what I'll say. I won't spoil it, but trust me, it's going to be one of those things you go, oh, all right, of course. So, but at the same time, though, this was a dumb, fun action movie to get to my final thoughts. I had fun with it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I must preface, I did get a screener for this. I didn't go to theater or pay for premiere access on it. But if I had seen this at, you know, an early matinee on a Saturday with my partner, I would I would have left the theater going, yeah, it was fun. Uh, this is playing in 3D, I believe. So maybe it's more fun in 3D. I, I'd probably pay 3D prices to just kind of see, honestly, because I could see some of the action sequences being fun, and I will say the first initial kind of chase, uh, there's this point where uh, L- Lily is trying to get this uh, artifact from this uh, shipment that comes in, and her and uh, Prince Joachim are going for the same artifact, and there's this very mummy moment where, <laughs> mummy moment, uh, where, <laughs> like in the first film, where Rachel Wise is on that uh is on that uh, ladder in the library and, you know, she almost loses her balance and everything. There's a sequence done like that here. And it's actually very well shot and very well just crafted. I really enjoy the sequence. And Emily Blunt gets to have some fun action sequences in here for the rock. Um, Some of which where she's just being chased was using her uh, environment to go ahead and like get away. It's kind of, I can't believe I'm going to give this compliment. It's kind of like almost like Abe's Odyssey ish. In that sense, it's kind of weird, but it, it it works. I really like the way that she's able to handle the action in this. And while Dwayne Johnson's Dwayne Johnson, I think Emily Blunt probably does as much, if not more, action beats than uh, than Dwayne Johnson gets to. And and I really like what she does with the action beats she's handed. So I really enjoyed this. It's again, it's it gonna. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm just kind of sitting thinking about. It. I mean, I would go see this in the theater. Even if I didn't get a screener, I'd go, you know what? Yeah, let's early matinee this and let's give it a shot. So I'm going to give this a B minus. Yeah, that that seems fair because I would even, even a B, I think it's being a little too generous on this movie <laughs> with some of the stuff it pulls uh, at the end to the, the so. OK, I will say, oh, actually, now I might give it a B because now he's just saying. So, OK, I, I'm not going to say what happens, but you you know, so. 
Uh, Jesse Plemons dies, because of course he does. Like, you know, he's the bad guy. He has to. The way he dies is so incredibly brutal. I actually went, holy shit, like, out loud. It was, it caught me so off guard, but in the best way. and went, wow, that's okay, movie. PG-13 rating. I appreciate that. But, yeah, it's, yeah, no, B minus, B minus, yeah, B's too generous. B minus, I'm sticking with that. Also, real quick, Paul Giamatti's in this. He's barely in it. I wish I could have gotten some more Paul Giamatti, but, you know, what are you going to do? But, yeah, this is a fine movie. It'll probably get a sequel. It'll be interesting to see what they do with a sequel. But where the film does end off is very interesting to me. So, but I digress. Uh, but, yeah, Jungle Cruise, everyone. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on SoundCloud, Apple and Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Tune Up, to name a few spots at The Real Pineapple. And don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at The Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. I'm going to be hopping on Twitch at some point. I don't know when, but I will, and I will keep you all updated on our pages uh, when that does happen. Uh, thank you so much again for listening. We'll have reviews up here soon for uh, the latest uh, Ghostbusters uh, Afterlife trailer. I've got some thoughts on that. Going to have a review here next week for Loki. I've got quite a bit I'm going to have to say about that show. And going to have a review up here this weekend as well with uh, my special friend Alyssa. Fucking love you, Alyssa. Uh, she's going to be hopping on here to help me review uh, the Suicide Squad this weekend. I am... Horribly excited to see that. I am praying it's as good as I'm hearing. But James Gunn is great. He rarely lets me down. Actually, he's never really let me down. Yeah, it'll be great. James Gunn's wonderful. But we'll have a review up for that as well. But everyone, thank you so much for listening again. Take care of each other. Get your COVID shot. If you haven't, please get your COVID shot. Uh, wear your mask. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you soon.